Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. As you can see, we're by the pond again. Um, I just wanted to give a bit of an update because you might not be able to tell, but it's got colder. You can tell by I'm now wearing a jumper. Um, it's towards the end of summer, we've just gone into September. It's The weather has changed in the last week, so it's time to start thinking about the pond. Um, it's probably not quite time to shut it down as such, and by shutting it down I mean stop feeding it, because that's kind of all I do here. But it's made me think about the pond, so I'm checking it out. I'm doing a final maintenance, making sure the filters are all good and running. Um, but I also checked back on the last video I made about the pond, which you can see up here. And I thought I'd answer some of your queries. In terms of what's changed, um, the biggest thing I talked about in the last one was the clarity of water that I, I couldn't see into it. I could see a couple of inches down and I, I had this measuring stick. So essentially a little a cable tie on the end, put it into the water and when you can't see it anymore that's that's your depth of clarity. Uh, and I've gone from 10 centimetres to 15 centimetres but then I added, or in the last video I added this filter here which you might be able to see which has an 18 watt UV. So to everyone who said 18 watts is no good that won't do anything, meh, 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 meh. I could use my clarity stick but stood here I can see all the way to the bottom so it has markedly got better obviously it's not the height of summer anymore so we've not got quite the amount of sunlight anymore but it's been like this for a couple of weeks um i mean there's no real point using this because i can see all the way down to the bottom and i can't actually reach the bottom from here with this but yeah we're we're past my scale so that is a big tick it's definitely much better and that was the real thing i wanted out of this because it's teeming with fish but i couldn't see them so yeah win-win in terms of plants, because that's another big draw for this pond, because obviously that's my house up there, that's my living room, and there's a little terrace there. So the reason I've got <laughs> these bandages on, because there used to be a conservatory there, which we took down and I fell off and broke my hands. But, you know, we can sit out there, and we've had a couple of weeks of summer to sit and enjoy the pond like that, and the plants out here are one of the main things, as well as all the wildlife that comes in here. So we're forever getting massive dragonflies and really colourful ones and all kinds of critters turn up. Um, but you know, the plants are nice to see. They're starting to die off now, but the lilies have done really well this year. The creeping jenny's kind of taken over. And we've got all these plants as well around the outside. But the one thing I did quite like is obviously the irises and everything have done really well. But the water lettuce, I put in some water lettuce earlier in the year and it immediately died but then it's sprung back up. So I'm going to try and save some of these for next year and start taking them out and putting them um, either in an indoor pond or indoor tank, something like that. But again, I don't know how well this is coming across in, ca in camera, but the pond's really deep at this point. Under there, there's like a concrete structure that I put in. You can go and watch my pond playlist and see all this happening. But that was meant to be the hide for the fish. I don't know if you can see it under there. So that's a good two or three foot down to the top of that. And you can see it as if it's right on the surface. So I'm really impressed with that. This filter box here, now it's been set up right, it's been an absolute beast of a job. Um, but yeah, all the plants, all the plants have done absolutely fantastic. It has been quite the visual sight, but just look at the fish over there. There's still hunters, hunters and hunters of fish. Uh, and that is one of the best things to watch here. Um, a quick recap for everyone that hasn't seen this before. The pond is fed by two pumps now. One, pond, one pump goes over to this filter, which is like a mini bog filter. Um, essentially, over the other end there's a pump, feeds into the bottom of that, then I've got pipework inside there, which rises up. Why are you not focusing? It rises up to the top with a T piece and back down to the bottom so as it fills from the bottom to the top and there's another pipe at the top that goes down and spits the water back out down there. So while it is technically a bog filter, it's quite small in comparison to the, the size of the water so maybe that's why it was a bit green earlier in the year and then we added this one which is just a little box filter. Um, again go and check out the last video but it's got UV which I think is in the wrong place, but there's no other way to do it because um, the UV is there, so the water goes in straight into the UV. Usually there's some kind of pre-filter, so I have actually added a pre-filter to the pump 
so that's doing a little bit of a pre-filter and then it goes up down up down it's like a box sump type arrangement with bio balls and sponges and everything but yeah in a couple of weeks we got to this level of clarity and it has maintained this level of clarity so I'm really happy with it pond is doing well. In terms of shutting it down, what I normally do, or what I've done the last couple of years, is essentially just turn off the filters and cover it over. Um, in fact, I didn't even cover it last year and it was fine. It froze over and all the fish, as you can see, have done very well. So, well, I say I'm getting ready to shut this down. I'm not actually shutting anything down. I'm just doing my probably last bit of maintenance. So I'm going to clean out the filter boxes, clean out the the bog filter, or give it a flush at least. Um, top up the water a little bit, make sure everything's happy. And all I'm really going to do is start reducing the amount of feed. Um, so obviously the colder the water, the harder the fish find it to digest food. Um, so I'll probably, I'm hoping for some kind of Indian summer and we get a little bit of a late heat wave or something like that, but you know, it'll never happen. Uh, but you can live in, live in hope. Um, so I'm just going to be ready for winter when it comes. Um, I'm probably not going to cover this pond again, because like I say, last year I didn't cover it and it was fine. But my other pond probably will have to be covered. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. This one's a little bit of a different prospect. This is what I've been calling my patio pond. Again, it's suffered with green water, but I've done nothing about that one. It kind of uses these plants here as a shade from the sun, so I kind of all right with the green water in there because it keeps the plants healthy. I've stocked this with little baby goldfish, uh, and they've done well in the green water and continue to thrive, although I don't see them all that much. But for filtration, I just have a solar panel, a couple of solar panels, one running an air pump and one running a small internal kind of box filters thing um, but this one does not do so well in the winter it is starting to um, the plants are starting to die off it's getting a bit cold like I say this one does need covering um, if I want to keep the fish in here so I have a decision whether I want to keep the fish in here and cover the pond or I take the fish out bring them back inside and drain it and start it again next year so that's what I did this year I, um, I don't know I don't know what to do it should be fine. It's in, there's kind of insulation because it's packed around with dirt. Once it's covered over, it should stay okay. Um, not much to say about this one. It's a cool little feature, but I need to upgrade the filtration if I want to see the fish in it, which might be a job for next year. I'm thinking of using the same um, idea, getting like a small UV filter but I want it to, there's no power out here, so everything has to be solar powered. So I'm going to upgrade the solar power stuff, which might help run all those things and make it look a little bit nicer. But other than that, I'm not going to do much to this one. And when I say upgrade the solar, so obviously there's these tiny little solar panels there that run it at the moment. I'm thinking about getting a bigger one, like a 1-200 watt one attached to here, because the house is here. Attach the solar panel to this and then maybe put like a garden box here so as it's out of the way with the battery and charge controller and all that kind of stuff because the sun spends a long time going over that way so it should get full sun for quite a while and to run such a small pond won't need much power so that should keep it going and like I say if I put all the gubbins here it's out of the way of the house and won't look too bad that's the idea anyway because I do, as much as I enjoy them, and it's probably good for the fish that it's nice and green in there, I'd like to be able to see them every now and again. Um, so there is that. As you can see, I've got a bit of a goldfish problem. Um, this is the indoor tank with all the goldfish. So this is where I would put some of the pond fish from the little pond if I was to, but there's already dozens and dozens of goldfish in here. Which, they get a bad rap, goldfish, as being, oh, these are just feeder fish, oh, so plain and boring. But do you know what? Having had this in here for nearly a year, goldfish are pretty cool. Having this as a goldfish tank, as well as them being pretty cool, has saved me a pretty penny because I'm not using any heaters in here. It's quite a cold room. Um, but really enjoying these fish. Um, they're doing really well. So I'm going to probably keep this for a while, certainly through the winter. And before I think about changing this to anything else, but it's going to be a goldfish tank for the foreseeable future. Loads of activity. That's, I, I don't think they get a, a good enough 
fair shake of uh, in the aquarium hobby. So I would definitely recommend it. A plain old boring goldfish tank is always good. So that's my ponds and goldfish update. I hope you enjoyed some of that. If you like that pond stuff, uh, let me know. Tell me in the comments if you want to see more of it. Tell me what you like. Tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. It's always nice to learn. Um, and if you fancy that, there's a subscribe button down there you can click. That'd be nice too. Come and join me on a Friday night. Most Fridays at 9 p.m. UK time we do a live stream. Um, and check out some of my other videos where we'll have stuff about all kinds of aquarium stuff. See you in the next one. Thanks for joining me. Bye.